ask you about this news that uh, Speaker McCarthy has formally launched an impeachment inquiry. Has said right. he's going to. Oh my God! Back. Really? Oh my gosh! You know? Oh, it's devastating. <laughs> Ooh, don't do it. They're just like, oh my God! You know, dogs and cats are living together, and you know, like I said, aren't there more important things we should be talking about rather than if if I dress like a slob? Whether it's the sham impeachment inquiry into President Biden or the pearl clutching over the Senate dress code, no one has done a better job at calling Republicans out on their nonsense than Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman. He has brilliantly dunked on the hypocrisy of everyone from Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert to Ron DeSantis, even playing into the right's vitriol over his casual attire by vowing to wear a suit if House Republicans manage to avert a government shutdown. And now Senator Fetterman is also calling out a member of his own party, New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez, who is facing federal charges for allegedly taking hundreds of thousands of dollars, as well as gold bars, in bribes. Fetterman was the first senator to call on his Democratic colleague to resign. And today, more than a dozen other senators have followed suit, including New Jersey's junior senator, Cory Booker. And Senator Fetterman joins me now, Democratic Senator John Fetterman of Pennsylvania. Uh, Senator, thank you so much for being here. Uh, and I guess the first question would be why you were first out of the box to call upon Senator Menendez to resign. And are you surprised it took so long for so many of your colleagues to follow? Uh, honestly, I, I was uh, actually surprised that I was the first one. I mean, it's so black and white. I mean, it's so clear. The last times there's ever been a man with so much cash in their home in New Jersey was uh, Tony Soprano. You know, I, <laughs> I mean, it, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not a close call. And if you were looking for the most incriminating kinds of evidence, it, nobody could even come up with gold bars in a mattress. Um, so, uh, and again, he, he's entitled to have his day in, in court, but he does not entitled to, to, to remain in the, the Senate and he needs to go. You know, uh, you know, a lot of people think about the, 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 the quickness with which many senators, including Democrats, went after Al Franken, Senator Al Franken, at a time when they really needed uh, his vote. He was the 60th vote uh, that got us uh, Obamacare to pass in the United States Senate. But there were people who were quite uh, a lot of moral rectitude when it came to him. Um, have some of those senators have not called on uh, M Senator Menendez to resign? I wonder if some of the more, I should say, uh, sanctimonious senators um, that we've heard from on things like Senator Franken or on other issues have come forward. I think about Kristen Sinema. Uh, we haven't seen her say much. We haven't seen Joe Manchin say much. Um, have you heard from any of those senators what they think of all of this? Yeah, obviously, I don't speak for anyone else in, in the Senate or myself, but what I can say is, is that, you know, he has to go. And New Jersey is a safe blue seat, and they have a governor ready to uh, to appoint somebody that's ready to step in and make the kind of votes that it needs to to do. And again, it's never been about him. Him. It's about the Senate and the integrity. And he's he needs to go. You know, the, you've been the subject of a lot of right wing freakouts. Uh, your casual dress code, which again, there are people like Senator Cinema who dresses, you know, very, you know, in her very own unique way, and no one's really said anything about it. Why do you think people are so fixated on you? I, I really, <laughs> I, re I really don't. As, as I've said before, you know, Ted Cruz could show up dressed like Spider Man, and I would be a okay with that. Uh, I do think we have more important kinds of things to be worrying about. You know, whether it's gold bars in a mattress, or whether it's the the shutdown, or the impeachment, or anything. Don't be surprised if Spider-Man calls you quite offended at being compared to Ted Cruz, but I'm going to leave that for another interview. Um, let, let's, let, let's talk about one of the most important issues that we have to deal with, and that is the potential that our government could shut down. I mean, that's going to hurt a lot of Pennsylvanians. It's going to hurt a lot of Americans. Uh, I don't think people understand just how deep uh, those cuts will cut, you know, and people are going to be harmed. What do you make of the fact that the Senate is now in a position of trying to salvage funding the government by passing, what, a 24-day or a 40 day workaround, meaning that the world is watching us fund our government potentially 24, 25 days at a time. You know, there's not one single senator in the Senate that wants this. And on their side in the, in the House, this is petty chaos by diminished men. And, you know, the last time they did this kind of thing, you know, it resulted in another credit downgrade. 
and we need to get to the point where it's like if they want to be this stupid to do this again, they're going to pay it, you know, in 24. Has Mitch McConnell? The, 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 I'm sorry, the really ones that's really going to pay are all the millions of Americans that that rely on all these kinds of things. There's absolutely nothing to gain, and like I said, it's just it's just petty chaos by diminished men. And I wonder if, I mean, I know, I know you're not necessarily privy to what they're doing in the other caucus, but Mitch McConnell seems that he's been very passive. In It's his caucus. It's the Republicans. It's and the Republicans in the House. Have you heard any energy from the Republican side in the Senate? You know, are they calling the other, uh, the gang in, uh, in McCarthy's wing and saying, you guys get this together? Uh, yeah, I, I, again, uh, you know the the minority leader and everybody has as always supports this this is this is silly this is silly and it needs to happen it benefits nobody in fact mcconnell leader actually said it's a loser for republicans every time they've done it before i i just i just don't understand what's behind this given where the state that you come from that's got a lot of blue collar workers um i wonder what you made of president biden walking that uaw line today um and being with those workers and his comments which are pretty blunt saying that they deserve to make more money they deserve to be paid more than they are awesome <laughs> awesome yeah i was there i was there and it was awesome you know these are incredible men and women there and i actually drove there from pennsylvania in the kind of bronco that they actually built and, you know, this is a pro-union president like we we can ever seen. And, of course, he was going to be there. He belongs there. And, you know, just the way the, the, the writers' unions uh, won, uh, won, you know, that needs to happen for the, the uh, UAW, and I believe it will. Uh, and I, I hate to ask you this, uh, but, you know, you're here, and I feel like it's my one opportunity to ask you about this. Apparently, there is a huge conspiracy theory that I might not have just had a conversation with you, that this might be the body double. Am I talking to you, my friend, uh, Senator, or am I talking to the body double? Hey, is he here? Uh, no, <laughs> Yeah, you know, in fact, he was supposed to show up um, and really address that, but he hasn't arrived here yet, unfortunately. And see, that's you exactly know, what I'm... <laughs> That's just what a body double would say, man. I mean, you know, I mean, that's just what a body double would say. <laughs> and, and, and again, if I had a body like this, I would sure want a better uh, double one of it. <laughs> Senator John Fetterman, uh, thank you for being here. Much appreciated.